What happens when your show is so popular and outspoken that you get taken off air? How come this has happened in a so-called democracy which should tolerate different opinions? That's what happened to Dr. Huang Chi Xian, whose popular political theory show was taken off air in 2019 because of her staunch support for Taiwan to be reunited with the mainland. What have the local authorities been doing to take the island away from China? Why is Taiwan a watchdog for the U.S. who brings its own food, in Dr. Huang's words? Here's our conversation. Huang Huang 把您的这个舞台放到了油管上或者其他的这个一切有可能的方式您都会把您的观点把您的一些想法和立场在努力的发出来呃跟我们讲一下为什么会受到这样的打压您认为这是不是一个打压为什么会受到这样严重的打压 there has always been suppression. It didn't happen just once. The last episode was in 2019. At the Streets Forum in Xiamen, I said that our generation should bring Taiwan back home. I think we as Chinese should follow the principle of the one country, two systems, which holds the greatest goodwill for the Taiwan region. When I said that on the stage, there were actually more than a thousand audience members and I could feel that everyone was on the edge of shedding tears. I also said I knew after saying the above words, I would be attacked when I returned to Taiwan, but I had to speak out. As soon as I got off the stage, Taiwan's green cam media started to attack me. About two days after returning to Taiwan, the program was suspended. The explanation was very straightforward. My program would be suppressed due to the pressure from multiple sides, including political ones. My program is the only TV program that maintains the stance of the Chinese people in Taiwan's history, that a large viewership can see in the mainstream media, including broadcasting and even print media. I follow what I truly believe in filming the program. So when I first saw President Xi's speech at the meeting to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the issuance of the message to compatriots in Taiwan, and he spoke to the people of Taiwan with an impassioned and sincere tone, my tears fell and I could resonate with him so much. He talked about China's history, the emotional attachment with, and the appeals and expectations for the people of Taiwan, and what he's willing and eager to do for Taiwan after reunification. He also talked about the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. I know what touches me will touch Taiwan too. Did you know that such an important speech was not covered by any media outlets in Taiwan? Some pro-green media may have only broadcasted a shot of his face for about two seconds and then started criticizing him. So people didn't know what he had said. When I broadcasted his 80-minute speech in my program, I didn't add anything. I cut it into eight clips and aired 10 minutes each day. The TV station told me that there would be no ratings if I did it this way. I said it didn't matter, you could blame it on me. Then he said that advertisers would stop paying for advertisements. Japanese and American companies would stop their advertisements. I said it didn't matter, just let me broadcast it once and you could fire me after that. Then I was told the official in charge had called to complain. It didn't matter. I would like to tell you that it was also the first time for all guests in the studio to watch the speech. They were all moved. When the program went on the air, 
I walked the streets at night and saw ordinary people watching Xi's speech in my program at noodle shops, restaurants, and roadside stalls. I know I have made it. At that time, I knew in my heart that my program would have an impact on them. Do you know how Taiwan's media covered the Hong Kong riots? They only reported how people were arrested by the police. Then I found out all relevant videos. Other media broadcasted the police arresting people and they were bad. But I showed in my program that there were three rioters beating the police. I didn't need to say anything more. So I think this is what I didn't think about. Because we didn't think about in a that is inevitable, because Western democratic electoral system is in a match with capitalism. It has a very big internal flaw. The system will give rise to populism and be controlled by capital then the capital will be intertwined with politics through interest groups. Taiwan's situation is much worse because it used to be a Japanese colony. Then Taiwan and the Chinese mainland were divided due to the civil war. But Japan had colonized Taiwan for 50 years. In those 50 years, Japan killed 600,000 people in Taiwan. Japan was very, very reluctant to leave Taiwan at that time. My ancestors came from southern Fujian to Taiwan hundreds of years ago. My father and my grandparents all went through the Japanese colonization. We know what the situation of Japanese colonization in Taiwan was. After the Civil War, Japan took advantage of the division to control Taiwan, not to mention the American control of Taiwan society. People who haven't lived in Taiwan and observed deeply can't feel that. Before my program was launched, no one believed that a program with such a position could survive. Nobody was optimistic, especially I'm not a professional anchor. I've had so many different experiences and occupations. How could I succeed? And my program supports reunification. Sadly, those who support reunification in Taiwan are treated as cockroaches. People attack it when they see one. Yes, we believe that we are Chinese. China must be reunified. Taiwan and the mainland must be reunified. When I was young, everyone supported reunification. But now, those who truly support reunification may only account for 2%, 3%, or 5% of the population. They face suppression in all walks of life, not only in politics and media. Why are they suppressed? Many audiences share with me their thoughts. Some have said, I haven't dared to say that I'm Chinese for a long time. We used to say that we are Chinese. But now in Taiwan, people say, we try, we Taiwanese, we do self-examination when we speak. When Taiwan audiences turned on their TVs and watched my program on the mainstream channel, they would discover that the anchor took the standpoint as a dignified and upright Chinese. And I have repeatedly stressed that I only speak the truth. Everyone knows about my background. I won't lie. I won't please those in power either. What I do is non-mainstream. I don't care whether it's mainstream or people hate it or not. Everyone believes that I'm not a person who likes to whitewash issues. I always show reality and truth in my program. The audience will know it when they see it. Gan 
据说是说漏了嘴，说如果台湾受到什么武力的侵犯的话，美国会要来保卫台湾。当然，后来美国国务院的人又来澄清哈，说他就不是这个意思。但这样三番两次的，大家已经不知道美国到底是什么样的一个一个一个立场。你觉得美国在这个过程中，他到底起了一个什么样的作用？他到底想干什么？美国非常的清楚，一个 The U.S. knows very well that a Taiwan region that's not reunited with the mainland is an invaluable asset for them. A fitting analogy is that Taiwan is a watchdog for the U.S. who needs to bring his own food. It's more pathetic than that. We're Chinese living on Chinese soil, and Taiwan is very important to China, but it's being penetrated by U.S. interests. Anyone who runs in general elections in Taiwan must report to the U.S. If you defy the U.S., there is almost no way to survive in politics here. In terms of military penetration, Zhang Xianyi used to advocate for developing nuclear weapons. He later defected to the U.S. The U.S. military penetration in Taiwan is very deep. Taiwan is working for the U.S. It even buys military equipment from the U.S. to monitor the mainland for the U.S. Taiwan could not access the data obtained, which gets delivered to the U.S. for analysis. Therefore, as a tool to contain, monitor, and separate China, Taiwan is so priceless for the U.S. So, America is not for the Taiwan people's services. It is not to give Taiwan a good protection for the Taiwan people's safety. It is to consider Taiwan as a political tool for the American people. Is that the understanding? Yes, it is a tool. You use it, you must buy it. But Taiwan is a tool. You pay for tools, but Taiwan offers to be the U.S. tool and even pays the U.S. Moreover, U.S. hostility toward China has been quite different in the past decade. That is because of the rapid development of China. The history, culture, and system of China pose a great threat to the U.S. desire for global hegemony. How is that a threat to the U.S.? China does not support hegemony. China is a peace-loving country. Chinese culture has its own strengths. We can bring happiness to our people by taking an approach different from capitalism that poses an even greater threat to the U.S. As our success would show the world that you don't have to follow the way of U.S. hegemony, instead, a peaceful path like China's can also bring prosperity and happiness to the people. What a threat to the U.S. Thank you. Thank you.